Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's been a minute again. It's just that time of the cycle where, you know, things, there's just not very much happening. I, you know, I don't know what else to report sometimes. But as always, I wanted to get on and kind of give you guys an update on what I'm seeing. Um, you know, just give you some some things to think about. So we're going to get into a few things that are happen this, happening this week, uh, what happened last week, and what's happening next week. So uh, stick around. We're going to get into all of that. Um, but before we do, I am going to get into the charts here in a second. But before we get into all of that, guys, I'm going to hop over here. This month uh, of September, I am kind of supporting the Salty Sanctuary. Now, these guys are in Utah, guys, and cool, cool thing there. It's a farm animal sanctuary with a zebra. <laughs> like super, super cool, guys. Uh, I don't know the full story on on what this how they came to have a zebra at their sanctuary. But, you know, they've got some uh, I don't know if that's an alpaca or a llama, uh, they've got a bunch of cows, chickens, um, horses, uh, just cool, cool sanctuary um, just south of me in Utah. Now, I am going to be, uh, this coming weekend, I am actually going down to Salt Lake. I have a booth at a festival there that I am going to be raising money 100 percent of the money that we raised in this booth is going to go towards uh the salty sanctuary so that's how i'm spending my uh weekend this this weekend but uh the salty sanctuary is going to be there with their own booth as well so i should be able to get to kind of meet these guys um probably you know have a, ask them about the the zebra and and their other animals so that'll be cool uh, but these guys are pretty small sanctuary again, guys. Um, and, you know, if you guys have anything that you can donate and help these guys out, very much appreciated. Um, these guys don't have a website that I know of, um, but they do have a Facebook. They have an Instagram and I have listed both of those as well as a link to their PayPal and their Venmo in the descriptions of my videos this month. So get into the description, go over, shoot those guys a couple dollars if you can, uh, help these guys out. You know, all, all of this really goes to helping, you know, feed these animals and really care for these, these animals that have been, you know, ab abused, neglected, uh, abandoned a lot of times. So anything you guys can do, will really help these guys out. Like I said, I'm I'm heading to Utah this weekend to to try and raise as much money as I can for them. Uh so I'm pretty excited about that. Um but yeah, let's get into it. Um going to shoot back over here to trade view. Now a, a few things here guys. I in my previous video I did kind of mention uh that we were kind of in this megaphone pattern which um you know is is these purple lines that I've kind of drawn out here. Now that it kind of looks like a parallel channel, a parallel descending channel, but these lines are actually spreading out and if I I've shown you guys this before uh, same time last cycle, we were putting in the same kind of pattern back here in 2020. So, um, and then obviously, you know what we did after that, but also a few other th interesting things. Uh, we've got this, I believe this is the 200 day moving average, this green line, and this is on the weekly, uh, chart, but you can kind of see We've been pretty well respecting that line as support on the weekly. Um, back here, this was when, you know, the Japanese ferry trade kind of blew up and we saw that really, really bad Sunday night and Monday. Uh, but we, we kind of wicked just barely below that, that moving average and then closed up above it. 
And as you can see, we've kind of did the same thing last week, and now we're bouncing off that moving average. So, and this, the, you know, the trajectory of this average, if we keep it as support, you know, the, traje the trajectory, don't know what happened there. Like we're heading up, 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 and up. So if we keep this as support, things should start turning around at this point. Um, now, in my last video, I did mention this golden cross. So technically, when we start to go parabolic in these, these major up moves, what we see with the, the 200, the 100 day, which is this orange one, and the 50 day moving average, which is the yellow, we usually see a green, orange, yellow pattern in that order. Green on top, orange in the middle, and yellow on the bottom. So it'd be 200, 100, and, and 50 day moving averages in order. That's what technically kind of has to happen before we see those major, major swings to the upside. And I was saying in my last video that we were right about to make that golden cross and guys, I am just going to show you, um, let me zoom in on this, but we have put in that cross back here last week. We did finally cross above that. We're just getting above it. So technically right now we do have that pattern, uh, in order to also go to the upside. Um, so, you know, a lot of things, just like I was saying in my last video, a lot of things are lining up, um, looking good for the future, the, the near term, midterm, and ultimately kind of the next year or so is, is really looking good for Bitcoin. Now, I, uh, there's, there are some things that are happening this week. Uh, we've got Mich Michigan consumer sentiment. Uh, PPI, which is inflation, and CPI, which is another inflation uh, measure, all coming out this week, the 11th, um, the 12th, and the 13th. So we've got a bunch of um, economic indicators coming out this week. Next week, on the 18th, we have the FOMC meeting, which all in all, the, FO, or the, the Federal Reserve more than likely, I mean, almost 100% is going to be cutting rates next week, which is going to end in liquidity coming into the market. And when that happens, things generally, it is a stimulus for markets, you know, unless markets have some other reason to be panicking, right? Um... So we're going to get into some of that as well. But um, the first thing, uh, as far as uh, bearish news, guys, is the Japanese yen trade. And we did, we've been talking about that for quite a while. Uh, I, I believe, let's see, it's been one, two, three, four, five weeks now since that uh, really horrible Sunday drop that we saw, that Sunday night drop. And Monday was really when the, the stock market really got hit pretty hard. Um, so we've been kind of talking about the Japanese yen trade since then. But what the, the yen trade is, is it's an arbitrage of uh, differences in interest rates from central banks, right? So an arbitrage is just when there's a difference in any market. Um, a lot of times when you're talking about arbitrage with cryptocurrencies, since it's not just all on Wall Street, right? It's just one market. Instead, you've got Binance, you've got Coinbase, you've got all these different markets with cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. So when Binance's price for Bitcoin is significantly different than what Coinbase's price for Bitcoin is, that's what, that is technically a arbitrage opportunity where people can buy the lower, you know, if Binance is selling Bitcoin for lower 
and Coinbase is selling for higher, you can buy from Binance, flip it onto, onto Coinbase and make money. And people do this. And it's technically usually a, a pretty good thing for markets because it does kind of stabilize everybody out. Um, now, what we have with the Bank of Japan versus other banks right now is J the Bank of Japan has had their rates so low for so long and everybody else has hiked. And now the opposite is happening. So you've got a bunch of people with loans and investments made in the Japanese yen that are starting to see things are starting to flip and they're trying to get out of that and and move forward into a different uh, paradigm that we're going to be going into where Japanese uh, the Jap Japanese yen is interest hike hiking interest rates and everybody else in the world is is cutting interest rates now what happened this last week we had kind of a bearish week last week we went from uh let me just switch back over here to trade view for you guys right here we went uh from about 60,000 down to 52,600 last week so not a great week last week not a great week the week before but i want to show you guys kind of my opinion on why that happened i think it's further uh unwinding of the japanese yen i'm going to jump over to uh this article this came out uh la uh the end of august so this is just this is since japan started hiking rates since we saw that major uh strengthen in the yen and that major unwind of the carry trade the Bank of Japan's uh, governor, Ueda, signals readiness to raise rates further if growth inflation are on track. So he basically came out, out and said, if things are on track, yeah, we're going we're gonna to hike more. So the past few weeks, I really do think that more of the carry trade has been unwinding. Uh, personally, I think that's the most likely thing that went on last week. Um, so going on, guys, another, uh, you know, this kind of looks bad on the surface. Um, this is the fear and greed index for Bitcoin. And as you can see uh, right here, let me get back to that. <laughs> okay, so as you can see right here, we are sitting in fear ter territory at 26. You know, we're at 26 today. We were at 29 yesterday. So somehow, I mean, we're up today, but somehow fear is even worse than it was yesterday. Uh, last week, we were at the same, you know, 26. Last month, we were at 40. Before that, we were at about 50. Um, and so fear the fear and greed index has just been coming down and down and down. Now, technically on the surface, this looks really, really bad, you know, like, oh, the market's in fear, things are going down, this is a bad sign. However, technically when we start putting in a bottom, whether it be the cycle bottom or a local bottom, we see these levels in the fear and greed index. Now I want to jump over to this tweet, which has this chart that shows exactly that. Now this, uh, back here, let me just widen this out for you guys. Um, so you can kind of see. So back here, uh, this was the end of the 2018 or 2017 16 cycle right and we bottomed right here in january of 2019 now you can see we had a bunch of like darker orange uh dots right here which signals this is the fear and greed value and this is clear down into you know fear and and extreme fear 
at the very bottom of the bear market. So technically, these levels show that this is a good time to buy. Now, from there in 2019, we shot up to like 14,000. And then we, you know, right there, we started putting in that mid cycle high right here. Um, and we started tra trading sideways and downwards, right? And right here we had uh, COVID, right? So black swan event, um, nothing like that has really happened this time. You know, we dropped from, I mean, technically right here, we were at 14,000 something and we dropped all the way down to like 3,700 or 3,900. So way down, we crashed really, really hard for COVID. But as this circle shows, this, is, this was us putting in those uh, lower fear and greed index dots, right? We had a, a good period of a lot of fear and greed right around that. Now, we did have the having right in this mid cycle uh, fear and greed, like fear territory right in this circle, we had the having. Okay. And then after we got done with this fear, we started coming out of it and we went into parabolic price action. Now, same has happened here. So we put on, put in our top here at 20, uh, in 2021 at about 69,000, right? And then 2022 was a complete year of just horrible bear action. And we got down here, we start, you know, technically in the bear market, you see a lot of fear and, uh, you know, fear and extreme fear in, in that index. But we, we had this, uh, bottom just like we bottomed here. We had fear and greed through the whole bear market back here, but once we saw the bottom put in just like this, we started hopping out of that bottom. And now we are at that boring mid cycle time. And we've just been going down uh, sideways and down just like we did back here in 2020, 2019 and 2020. But look, we've, we're now hitting those fear dots on this, this plot. And just like last time, right here in this circle where we were putting in these fear dots, we've had that having right here in that circle. So once we start coming out of this fear and greed, um, you know, depression, it, it just kind of shows you that we are still on track, guys. We are still on track for the four year cycle. You know, a lot of people got you know, scared that we had broken the four year cycle by putting in this all time high before the having right here because of the ETFs. But honestly, guys, this was not the parabolic action of this cycle. This was much more like this uh, part of last cycle where we were just coming out of that bear mar market bottom right there. We, we shot up. And now we're just trading sideways, just like this time last time. You know, we've been, you know, technically we kind of shot up here. We traded sideways. We got the ETF news and we, but we've, you know, you take out the ETF excitement and the buying from Wall Street. And we've really just been going sideways since probably quarter one or quarter two of 2023. We've just been, you know, we've had this sideways action. You take this ETF stuff out and we've just been continuing this sideways action. So guys, I don't know. I don't know. There's just so much that signals to me that we are still in the four year cycle. And right now, nobody is interested in cryptocurrency. You know, nobody's watching my videos, everybody else that's on YouTube is, is saying, you know, we don't know why we're doing this, these videos during this, this sideways action because nobody's, nobody's interested. And those are the times 
when it's gonna when Bitcoin will surprise everybody and catch everybody that's on the sideline off guard and leave them leave them behind. So I'm not I'm not worried, guys. I mean, yeah, listen. <laughs> Here's the thing with these long sideways times. Y you can predict them all day long. And I've been saying since long before uh, any, of, any of this price action shot up and before the, the halving, I've been saying that around the halving, you go sideways and you go slightly down during those times. So it's, it's largely sideways, but you do trend downwards too. And you can predict that all day long, but once you get into the depths of these, this, where the market is feeling this fear and, uh, you know, extreme fear, that'll make your stomach kind of drop no matter how much you knew it was coming. So I would be lying if I said that I, I wasn't like sweating it. But honestly, you know, if I go back to, uh, some of my videos pre having, you know, pre having, I did one video pre having that was, you know, we were, we were already up at like 70,000, but I was saying that, you know, honestly, we should probably be either trading around 35 for the having or 52, depending on where you see, uh, where you thought we should have set a high last cycle. And I was saying, you know, because of the ban in mining in Japan or uh, in China, you know, that really stunted our last cycle. And really, if you took that out, we should have probably put in a high at about 105,000. If we put in 105,000 uh, high last time, what we technically, accord according to previous cycles, what we should have been trading at is 52,500, which is basically half of what that high was, right? So, and you know, look at where we're at now, guys, we're, we're in the fifties. So, you know, I was saying back then, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it kind of came back down during this boring time to 52,500. And, and now that it has, now I'm like, oh, second guessing myself on a few things. And why? It's just human emotions, guys. Like you cannot trade on human emotions. It'll get it'll catch you off guard all the time and 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 leave you behind. So I am not trading. I'm not selling. Um, I just wanted to sh kind of show you guys these things because I think we're still in in the four year cycle. I think we're still there. I think we're in this, this weird mid cycle doldrum period where everybody is losing interest. And that is exactly when we start going parabolic. So things to look forward to guys. Um, what else do I got? Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it guys now there is one other chart i want to show you guys because this is a big narrative that i've been seeing right now um i'm going to jump back over here so a lot of people are saying we're in september september is the worst time the worst month historically now i want to show you guys this uh let me just zoom out a bit so you guys can see this whole chart. Okay. So as you can see, um, we've got January, February, all the way back down to two or back to 2013. We've got averages and medians down here. Now, if you look at the averages for January, it was positive, uh, February, positive, 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 positive. We had a negative, we have a negative uh, average for June for all of June's going back to 2013, but just barely 0.35% in the negative. Uh, July is positive. August is positive, And then September is our worst, historically our worst month. 
we have a negative 5.04% uh, change in average in September's. Now, the narrative out there is that we're going to have an, another bad September. Uh, we're going to end September in the red, and then October, commonly referred to as October, uh, because it, you can see right here, guys, October is a huge month historically. Second best month historically of all months. Uh, plus 22%, almost 23% on average. And then we have November that's plus 46, almost 47% on average. So the narrative out there for this is that we're going to end, you know, September is a bad month. Don't expect much, right? However, we did have our having month, one month before we did last time. So could we, could we end September a little more bullish, uh, like October of last, last time we had a 28.52% increase in October. Uh, uh, well, that was actually last year. Let's see, uh, last cycle, it was 27.7. So pretty much the same, but could we start that one month earlier due to the earlier, um, having month, right? Could be. Um, now, if you're a statistician or know anything about statistics, you could also look at this and say, well, not every September is, um, is bad, right? Like we had two Septembers in a row that were good in 2015, 2016, now we are in the red so far this month. We're we're down. I think now we're only down. We're down less than this 7.93%, but we are still in the negative so far in September. But last September in October or in September 2023, we were positive. So could we be having this this spurt of green Septembers could happen. You know, some might look at this and go, "Yeah, we're we're kind of due for a green September. So guys, the point is, is I'm not selling based on uh, historical bad months. <laughs> um, I don't, you know, I don't want to be sidelined. You know, I keep saying that over and over to you guys. And, and that's part of my plan. So on this channel, I've, I've often stressed, you know, if you want to be in Bitcoin, you need to have a plan because crazy things happen and your emotions will get the best of you. And that's my plan is I, I plan on being in this, uh, in crypto, in Bitcoin, at least until next year, quarter three, quarter four of next year, 2025. Um, and nothing has changed. Like, yes, I reserve the right to change my plan if something has changed and I don't see anything changing. You know, like really when I step back and I look at the charts, I see all these connections that have happened every single cycle. So, you know, that paired with the fact that tomorrow is definitely going to be more and more digital than it was yesterday. And I believe Bitcoin fits into that narrative of, you know, the world is more moving more and more digital. Our money system is naturally going to be more and more digital. And that's Bitcoin. So according to my plan, like nothing has changed. And I am, I am staying in, you know, I've been in, I've, I've been staying in, you know, obviously if your plan is different, you've got to, to, uh, you know, evaluate what you need to do according to your plan. You know, whether that be I buy in, I hold for four years um, or whatever, whatever your plan is, you know, you kind of have to do what's right for you. But for me, I just see nothing but the same. I, I really think we're still on the four year cycle. Um, I think we could end September in the green. And I, I mean, look, guys, next month is up 
October. And <laughs> you could, yeah, I guess you could possibly say the opposite of, of what I was saying about my positivity about possibly ending September in the green. If you're looking at, at October, you could possibly say, well, we're due for a red October. And maybe, but it doesn't happen often. And those, those small time, those times we have ended October in the red, even in the bear markets, you know, 2022, October, we were up 5.56%. And that was the bear market. This was a bear market year right here. And we still had a, a green October. Um, and, and on average, we have 22.9% gains in October, 46.81 in November compared to the worst possible month, guys. We have 22 and 46% in the following months compared to the absolute worst month in Bitcoin. And that's only down 5%. That's almost 10% less down action than November is up action, to put it mildly. So, guys, the four-year cycle, you know, if, if we don't start, you know, really starting, start seeing some, some gains in October, November, December, at that point, I may have to say, yeah, you know, the four year, the four year cycle isn't holding, but right now, guys, this, this whole, uh, since April or so of going sideways, nothing about that signals that anything is different here. So anyways, guys, that's just the, the video that I wanted to get on and kind of make for you guys today. Just wanted to let you guys know where my head's at with it. Yes. It is a fearful time, uh, and I'm not immune to that by any means. I, I have my emotions in check a little bit more than a lot of people, I think. You know, I don't panic sell. Uh, but, yeah, when you're just thinking about it and you're going through these fear um, and extreme fear times in the market, it plays tricks on your, on your psyche, man. So. Um, you know, if you're hanging in there, congratulations. I think, I think it's a smart move. Um, continue hanging in there. I, I, I really don't see anything different happening here. So anyways, guys, if you like this video, please, um, hit the like the subscribe button, um, down below. Really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your days and watching my videos. I know I haven't been on very often lately. Um, you know, part of it's, you know, just being being a boring time in crypto right now. Nobody's interested. Nobody's watching any of these videos. Uh, so I appreciate you guys showing up and, and watching them. Um, but there's just not a lot to be said right now. Um, I do plan on covering the FOMC meeting next week, so I will definitely be back by then. Um, and yeah, just hang in there and I, I appreciate you guys and I will see you in the next one.